Buscelli um, lived a very short and brief life. Um, and what, how do I put this? Shelley, Shelley was a writer of, of what, what's considered infidel poetry. Um, and he talked largely about, is there a God or is there not? Um, and the American Atheist Association uses one of his poems as their address. So just to tie history together for everyone. So anyways, um, Shelley, of course, he was born through the uh, landed aristocracy and, um, and his uh, family um, basically abandoned that because they were broke and none of them wanted to work because that's what they were raised to do. Um, so they essentially tried to live off of a little bit of a conservancy and tried to get their, their lives in order, which caused Percy to have a very messy early upbringing. Um, and I think that's what really brought his intensity and uh, his kind of dreamy abstract writing to the forefront was this early um, early messiness in his in his early life, um, even to the point where his parents said, "I we really don't even want you." Um, but he lived a very highly un unconventional life. I mean, he married Mary uh, Wal Walson Wollstonecraft, and um, and this is after his first wife had committed suicide. You know, usually there's an there's a mourning period in society, but he said, fuck that. I met a babe, I like her, we're into the same things, and we're gonna be unconventional. And again, another, another uh, uh, nail in his coffin, socially. So we're looking at social awkwards. Um, so what did, what did Shelley, and by the way, he, Shelley, uh, uh, Percy, and Mary met each other through Lee Hunt. So another tie together. Um, and he also, uh, he also met his first wife through Lee Hunt. Uh, Lee's, uh, I'm sorry, Percy's first wife was Lee's first cousin. Um, so anyways, uh, what, what is Shelley's poetry? It's intense. It's elaborate, it's elaborate sim, uh, symbolic language. Uh, it's abstract and also probably uncommonly unwor unworldly. You know, it was, it, was, it was romanticism to its final degree, where it really became almost almost uh, nothing based on, on, on reality. Um, and he was very passionate to reform the world. He felt that the world was going down the wrong road, like all of the other guys and gals in this group. You know? And he said the, the only way that men and women could ever be equal, now these are terms that are unheard of, the only way that men and women can ever be equal is if we learn the philosophies of our forefathers and bring them in to the present. Um, and, well, anyways, um, Shelley wrote a little over 1,500 pieces, substantial amount of work, and he was, he was dead by the age of 29. 
Uh, he drowned. He drowned in Italy. Um, so, anyways, I'd like somebody to come up and if they can read a little bit about read a little bit of Shelley's work. I just have one short piece to share from Percy Shelley, and it's called Love's Philosophy. There again, one of his more popular, more well-read ones. It says, the fountains mingle with the rivers, and the rivers with the oceans. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is simple, all things by law divine. In one spirit meet and mingle, why not I with thine? See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgiven if it disdained its brother. And the sunlight clasps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What is all this sweet work worth if thou kiss not me? That's love's philosophy. And there again, he was bringing together so many um, philosophical ideas. He um, researched the ancient Greeks very, very much and was very into um, bringing their ancient philosophies into their mo his modern day world and um, no that's actually Keats yeah but they were all one and the same Keats is coming up next and they were all fast friends and they all did this together as a movement so to speak a cultural movement and it's um, it's influenced everybody down the road since then. Right, right, you know, and it's just amazing and it's something that is not news, but it kind of was news to me in researching some of this stuff to see how it all came about. And one of the things that um, Percy Shelley, uh, Mary Shelley, Keats, Byron, that in their Greek researches and stuff, they all um, refer to Prometheus. They all have it in their writing. You know, the the subtitle of Frankenstein is the the modern Prometheus, back in the day, and that's a, a Greek mythological being that um, brought being to life through fire stole fire from the gods, right. And, you know, they are actually the basis of modern science fiction writers. And it's just amazing. I mean, everybody's familiar with the Matrix. Prometheus, there he is. And, um, of course, Frankenstein was, you know, creating that new being. And all... Science. What? With science. With science, yes. Yeah, so it's really amazing that uh, so much of the science fiction genre is based on these romantics. And there's more of it. I, I won't be a spoiler because I think we've got more stories to tell about that. But uh, we've got some other authors that uh, have greatly influenced our modern day big selling science fiction writers. So I'll let Ian continue. So what, what's the, what was the intent of this group? What did this, what, what did this school, what did this English Romantic school do? What was its point? Its point <clears throat> was to create a whole new view on the world, a whole new view on humanity. And it wasn't really new. 
It was old, but bringing it into fashion. Um, so to Mary Shelley we go. Tijon, Tijon, this dreams where you belong. 